Hello and welcome back to another Warcraft video. So today we're going to be having a look at a rather cool zone called the Spires of Iraq. Now I've just finished off all of the questing in here. I'm not too sure exactly when this video is actually going to go up on the channel, but I thought it was a pretty good time to give you a little bit of a tour of the zone. So um, you'll probably, oh whoops, I've dismounted. You'll probably notice right behind me is that's um, Talador. So this is the entrance actually. And this zone really does sort of put you in in a really impressive manner. You can see the spires and Got to say, the spires, really awesome. I love this sort of art style that they've gone with, with the rocks. Like, things are very pointy, and the shading and all that stuff is really great. Um, now, when you actually get in here, I don't want to spoil the story too much, but for an example, here's Skettis. So, you can find all these dudes. Here's some of the new Arakoa models. Um, things are not going well for the old Arakoa models. They are being slaughtered, but whatever. There's lower stuff there that I'm not going to spoil for you. And now, don't worry, we will be using um, flight points and things like that in this video, because... Uh, well, you know, it'd be kind of crazy if I just ran around the whole place on foot. It would take like three hours. So this zone is actually really cool from a aesthetic perspective. I've got to say I'm surprised, actually. I initially thought that it would be sort of a bit dull and washed out looking. But I can say that at least at nighttime, that absolutely is not the case. I'm um, sure it's not got any crazy colors going on, but it's got those shots of purple and just the contrast that's going on throughout the zone it just looks really, really cool. It's also one of those zones that really benefits from being on the ground. Um, everything just feels like it's kind of looming over you, and that really does help out with the immersion. And I think immersion is very important. It's something that actually is really key to a lot of the Draenor zones in a way. Um, I'm going to try to get through here. No, no, I'm not. Welp. Anyway, immersion does seem to be key to a lot of the Draenor zones. They just, it feels like Blizzard have put a lot more work into each individual zone than they would have previously. So, that, that's certainly a good thing. Maybe that's <laughs> delayed the expansion or something, but hey, whatever. And it, it does result in us having really cool zones. Sorry, I'm kind of getting lost here. This forest is, well, it's it's a little bit weird to get around in. Not because it's, like, horrible to travel in. It's just that, well, not, not because there's, you know, terrible paths or anything. It's just trees and me being a complete idiot trying to record a video at the same time. Anyway, so, we do have a lot of Arako stuff going on here, but we also have a few other factions. Mainly some goblins, and of course the Shattered Hand Orcs. They're the main Iron Horde problem that you face here, but you also deal with a decent amount of Arakoa stuff. And the Arakoa stuff, for the most part, is pretty cool. Another thing that we get to see in this zone is, um, well, some cool lore about Terok, and stuff like that, and of course the, um, the Garrison Outpost, which I will show you in a bit. What was that? Oh, it was just supposed to be in a flight point, but it looked really big from uh, the perspective that I was at. Anyway. So the first place I'm going to show you is Talon Watch. Really, not because Talon Watch is particularly interesting, just because I want to get it out of the way, because it's, I mean, it, it's okay, whatever. There are a few cool quests that take place in it, though. Um, again, no spoilers, but let's just say the quests are really cool for this zone, and I'll probably have a zone review up for this soon enough, um, once I can just sort of collect my thoughts a little bit more. Just like, I do know that a lot of people want to get the... The kind of tour, but they don't want to really know much else other than just sort of think to themselves, oh, that's a pretty zone. So that's, that's what's going to happen in this video. And here we get into the more kind of foggish part of the zone. I've never really liked Blizzard Fog. I continue to not really like Blizzard Fog. I think they could do better things like, uh, I don't know, I, I just don't really like Blizzard Fog. They could probably deal with them. Um, you know, this stuff in a little bit of a better way. I don't know, whatever. So this is basically this like hollow place. Um, and, yeah, apparently that's how the Arakoa get turned into, like, the, the, the little twisted versions of something. I'm not 100% sure, but, hey, it's a cool place. Now that we've seen Talon Watch, let's move on to more exciting things. Um, yeah, right, where should we go? So, well, no, the, the Twilight Clade is in Shadow Moon Valley, that's not the topic of this video. Um, we could go to Vale to Rock, then probably just down to Southport, and I'll show you the Goblin stuff. Um, it's funny, you know, it's not like this is a giant zone. I mean, it, it is pretty long, but when you fly around like this, you really do see everything rather quickly. I mean, oh man, just look at those. They look really cool, and the Araco architecture is just awesome. You know, it really is. Um, anyway, so the, the good news is the Flight Master bought his, um, he bought the Collector's Edition, which means that I actually get to use it. It's funny, you know, a lot of the mounts in this are store mounts. And, um, like, you're either running around in a, a Rylak, a Fey Dragon, or the Collector's Edition mount. It's kind of funny how that's turned out, but whatever. Let's, um, let's continue our movement. So this is 
like the home of the outcasts who are like the friendly Arakoa. They're actually a faction that you can earn rep with in the game. Or at least this is one of their little um their little places. Of course, there's not too many of them because, as we saw earlier, they did kind of, you know, get a bit slaughtered. Not too fun. So, um, yeah, lots of cool stuff going on here. Um, I don't know, there's not really much else to show you here. It's still just this sort of nice... I I'm going to say nice, but, you know, dull forest because it, it does feel really moody, which works out quite well. Um, you know, it it's, it's nice, it's immersive. And that's really a good thing. Anyway, so now we've had a look at here, let's head on to Southport. Now, Southport is the location of our, um, of our garrison, or our outpost, even. If you don't know, there's outposts within zones, which are like mini garrisons. It's essentially just a quest hub, but you choose one building in that hub, and you get a buff for it. Um, now, I could just use this teleport thing, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but I'm going to fly there so you can get a bit of a look at the scenery. Alright, back to the Flight Master. And, uh, yeah, to Southport. Of course, some of these flight points just really are not done at the minute, so they kind of send you through the ground sometimes. Just, you know, there's some weirdness. Now, there's a little spot of Zanger Marsh. This, um, well, marshland with all the mushrooms is kind of scattered throughout the place. Um, which, yeah, is a thing. I like the way the night sky is very clear here. I just, it just looks like these are kind of jacking up into the darkness. It's, ah, oh, it's really cool. And I love how the moon is really big. That obviously indicates that this is a newly formed planet. Um, well, I'd imagine this would indicate that it's a newly formed planet. Because, um, well, for example, moon, or Earth, Earth's moon used to be far closer and far, far, far larger than the night sky. But of course, over the, you know, many, many years since Earth's been created, the moon's, of course, floating away from us. So that's what's, uh, that's, yeah. I don't know, maybe just this indicates that the moon is very close and that this is a new planet. I'd imagine the tides here would be pretty feckin' mental. I don't know. I'm going to stop pretending to know a great deal about space. Um, I suppose I know a little bit about space, but not, not that much. Anyway, so here we go. Here's our garrison building. For some reason, it's literally just plonked here. Um, I mean, I can't actually go into the basement of this inn because... Oh, I can. That's interesting. Last time I couldn't. Um, this could be good because I think there's a quest in here that I wasn't able to get earlier on. Nope. Well, the NPC exists. Oh, it's a wanted poster, so it probably doesn't even matter. Yeah, so you get the choice between this and some other building. I'll talk more about these in specific in the next um, the next video. I think the other one's like a trading post. This gives you probably the most shit buff that I've seen yet. Um, it's called Home Away From Home. It, look, it's just a hearthstone that takes you back here, and I suppose that's fine. It's passive is that you always get rested XP in the Spires of Iraq. But the reason why it's boring is because it doesn't actually contribute to your gameplay. It doesn't do anything interesting like that. It's just a thing that you never really forget about and that you can sometimes port back. But honestly, because you're always going to be beside a flight point, it doesn't particularly matter. Now, we're going to go to a failed alliance garrison here. And the name of the zone will... I don't know. You could consider some of this stuff to be a slight spoiler. A spoiler I don't because there's actual... You know, there's a, a whole bunch of quests that go on in, in here that have their own conclusion. And I'm not going to spoil that. You'll just see the location. But yeah, it's essentially an alliance garrison that's full of ghosts. Ooh. So yeah, here we are in Admiral Taylor's garrison. I will give you no word about the fate of Admiral Taylor, though. So look, this guy's, um, he's dead. Well, I mean, he's a ghost, but... Yeah. So there's him. Um, I'm not really going to go too far in. Maybe we'll just, uh, we'll just camo in for a second, you know, take a little peek. What you see is... This is a very kind of overgrown, moody garrison. I think it looks pretty cool, actually. Um, it's a bit bigger than our garrison. In fact, I I don't know. Maybe this would be preferable to the garrison that I have if it wasn't all, you know, torn to pieces and full of dead people, obviously, because, you know, having all of your followers be dead people, not particularly useful unless they're undead. But since I'm the alliance, I don't really get undead followers, and you get my drift. Also, the map sometimes just breaks and tries to show you Frostfire Ridge. Um, so, yeah, let's just continue on uh, moving down here. Um, I, did I get, I don't know if I got to show you Blade Fist Hold. It's kind of hard to get there. Maybe we'll just fly back up to this, um, excavation site thingy. But this is where Cargath Blade Fist, um, chills out and the Shattered Hand Clan. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, actually, I'm just going to go down to Venture Cove and this goblin place. So this is pretty cool. The goblins are here. 
And why? Well, because I'd imagine they weren't too sure what to do with the tip of the zone. And hey, we can put goblins in it, so let's do that. Because look, they're goblins. All they need is natural, like, resources to exploit, and away they go. So, you can really stick them in any zone you want to pad out the quest. But, they do provide a decently entertaining side, um, like side quest thingy. It's strange, you know, the side... What? Well, I, I know I'm at your command... You're at my command, even, but could you not just let me fly somewhere? No. Alright, well, looks like we're doing this one the old-fashioned way. Huh. Insolent brat. Anyway, let's get moving, because our flight master is a bloody moron. Okay. So we're going to at least, uh, we'll get to have a look at Blood Main Valley. Yeah, it's just gonna be cool. So what's in Blood Main Valley? Well, a whole bunch of Saberon. Do you know what the Saberon are? Well, maybe if you don't, then the Saberon are basically just cat people. They use the Wargon model, but they look like cats. That's, well, they use the Wargon skeleton. Um, I think they are, they're, they're a remodel, they're not a, like, a re-skeleton or anything like that. It's the same animation rigs, um, from what I can tell. Um, I suppose I may as well give you a bit of a pika in there. Yeah. Why not? Why not? In fact, I should probably just go through here anyway on my way to the, um, the Gearworks. Now, hopefully we don't get dismounted. That would be a pain in the ass. So, yeah, this is a nice place. I like the color of the grass. It feels kind of savannah-ish, but... Uh, not savannah-ish. I don't really know what I mean, but... Well, maybe you know what I mean. I don't even know what I mean. Whatever, let's uh, move away from this shitty bunch of sentences and, uh, and find the goblins, because you know what? We understand the goblins. They're cool. Bonus object. Oh yeah, there's, so there's a bonus objective in there um, to kill some saber on, which is fine. I suppose normally there would have been like a whole bunch of side quests for that, but I think Blizzard just decided, hey, bonus objectives mean that it's a bit more freeform and it means that every single quest can be awesome. Like, maybe they wouldn't have been able to create a really cool story surrounding those Saberons, so instead they're just a bonus objective. Or maybe they could have made a really cool line of quests around them, but they couldn't be arsed. Um, we'll never know, I suppose. Um, right, anyway, so I'll show you, uh, Venture Cove. Actually, wait, no, it, is this the Venture Company? I don't know if it's the Venture Company, we haven't seen them in ages. I don't think, anyway. I wouldn't mind seeing them again. Yeah. Oh well. So, we'll have a little bit of a peek in here. Basically, it's all Kazan architecture. It's it's what you expect, you know? Nothing crazy. Though we do get to have a bit of a closer look at some of the Zangramar style stuff. Some of the new Fan Creeper guys. The new Spore Bats flying about the place. Looking very snazzy. And things are not going particularly well for the people at Ventureport. So, I mean, that's a thing. I'm not going to tell you what's going on, so let's just leave. We'll go to where the nice friendly goblins are in the... Uh, clutch pop gear war uh, gear works. I don't know why I fundled up that word, but whatever Um, so oh, yeah, there's you see that island. That's basically netherling netherling. Wow nether wing ledge from the old shadow moon valley Um, yep, yeah, that's a level 100's um, little like sub area thingy. That's full of the iron horde It's pretty fun. I suppose so maybe you'll get a like a daily quest to go there and kill some hordes Ah, oh, well so, what else to have a look at? Well, probably the Clutch Pop gear works. yeah. And it's funny, you know, we've basically looked at this entire zone in not that much time. Um, traversal here is actually really easy. When the flight points work, Mr. Southport man, and the flight points are really good, they let you get all over the place, and they're all decently central. Um, so it, it all does work out quite well with the quest flow that you have. And that's nice, I never felt like my traveling was ever a problem. Essentially, so here's a bit of a look at this place. You know what? It's exactly what you'd expect. So whatever. Let's let's move on. I'll show you the stuff with Cargath Blade Fist, or at least I'll show you a little bit of the Shattered Hand stuff. And um, there's a story there, but I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to experience it for yourself. Or maybe at some point I'll start doing lore videos if the beta really drags on, and uh, and I need some content to do. Um, anyway, so hey, look. We're on a flight point in Draenorhorn, it ain't a store mount. Hell yeah. So, what have we got here that's cool to comment uh, comment on? Not really much, I mean, you've seen all this stuff. This zone, definitely at nighttime, looks really impressive. I have been in here at daytime, and honestly, I think that it it's better shown off at night. Really? Oh, there's some ogre on. I did not... Huh, maybe I should go and check that out after this. Yeah, big dread ravens as well. Lots of really cool stuff. But I think this zone does look its best at night, by far. It's just so cool, honestly. I was really surprised at this zone. I thought it was going to be the Zoldrak of this expansion for me. 
But actually, I think Gorgron might be the Zoldrak. I mean, Gorgron isn't that bad. It's totally doable. It's fine, whatever. But Gorgron is a little bit dull to me, unfortunately. Even the nice Bright Lush place and... Well, you can go, um... You can sort of choose between questing in either the foresty bit or the non-foresty bit. Both of them, unfortunately, just have got really boring quests. So, that was annoying. But yeah, I've got to say, this zone really did surprise me. I didn't think it would be as fun. And the story is actually fantastic. Um, now, not the Alliance story, that, that's all cool, but the story that I mainly found to be really interesting was the stuff with the Arako. It was really well told, it was interesting, it was a lot of fun. So again, well done, Blizzard. You've got these big black lines appearing. That's just a bug that's been kind of cropping up as of one of the more recent beta builds. So this place is actually full of Sun Constructs and the new Arakoa, who are, of course, the mean Arakoa. So you probably expected. Uh, right, well, uh, take a quick little gander at Blade Fist Hold. Sorry this video's went on for so long, but, I mean, hey, we gotta chill out and look at a zone, so I suppose that's all well and dandy and stuff. Ah, yeah. So, yeah, we did a bunch of quests here. It was pretty cool, actually. I think they ended with us, like, capturing this turret thing. And that was, I believe, one of the first turret quests. I mean, okay, there's a turret quest in the Tanan jun Jungle um, intro experience. But other than that, it was one of the first turret quests that, that, that I did. And it was decently different from other turret quests. So it was, you know, well-paced and, uh, and fun. Anyway, so here is Blade Fist Hold. There are a lot of thorns here. Lots of thorns indeed. And um, I think as it turns out, the lore of these guys is there. Well, they're all based on their, you know, their pain and suffering and all that fun guff. So, yeah, whatever. They also ride around on Ravagers. So I suppose if I was going to be really cynical, then the vicious Ravager mount from the Blizz store, um, I mean, probably also could have been a, a thing to obtain in-game. But whatever, whatever, we're not going to do that. We're not going to get back into that discussion because people completely missed the point of that video and got really butthurt for no fucking reason. Anyway... Um, so let's, I don't know if we can find Kargath himself, unfortunately. I mean, I'll try, but we're just kind of, yeah, just kind of stuck in here. I don't think this is going to lead me anywhere. Well, I mean, it's going to lead me up here, I know that much. Oh, we got a bonus objective. Kill a whole bunch of the orcs and, uh, and some other stuff. Cool, oh yeah, actually this did lead somewhere. That is something I didn't expect, so here's probably the sort of, you know, blade fist hold proper. Yeah. Now, I guess one nice thing about this home away from home thingy that I get from the Lunar Fall Inn is that I can actually use it in combat, and even when I'm running around the place, um, you know, it'll still keep on casting. Yep, so there is, uh, Kargath's seat, I suppose. I don't know if Kargath will be in. Nope, looks like Kargath is not in attendance right now. That's fine, that's fine. I'm a hunter, so I can just kind of cheese my way out of this whole situation. Take that, guys. Haha. <laughs> Um, but yeah, lots of guys, um, of course, you know, the Shattered Hand are big into their brawling in their arenas, so they're all in there having a little bit of a rustle. But that's basically it. I'm going to use my OP Hearthstone to get away from here and close off the video. So that was a look at Spires of Iraq. It's a really cool zone. It's got great quests. I'll probably do a, you know, concise, edit, um, edited together, um, you know, video giving you a bit of a review of it or something, maybe this week. I don't know. Look, it was cool. That's um, that's this video done. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Please, um, you know, like, subscribe, favorite, dislike if you didn't like it. Like if you liked it. Leave a comment. Uh, favorite the thing. Give me your grandmother's pension and do a backflip. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>